If you drive for DoorDash, Uber Eats, or any other delivery app for that matter, you could be making a mistake that's costing you time and money. Make sure to stick around to the end of this video so you don't accidentally misclassify yourself, therefore giving up your freedoms in the process. What's going on everybody? I'm Zach Drys Fast for The Rideshare Guy, and today we're going to talk about common driver mistakes that eat into their time and profitability. Let's be real, when people start doing this type of work, they're going to make mistakes. It's almost inevitable. The issue is, many gig drivers are making the same big mistake, and there seem to be countless ways to make that mistake. Furthermore, many don't realize that they're making this mistake. I'm talking about drivers that treat DoorDash, Uber Eats, or any other app as if they were their employer. As a gig worker, it's important for you to know that you are not an employee of any of these companies. And while you may be representing them, you don't have the same rights or protections as a traditional W-2 employee. This includes things like a salary, an hourly rate, benefits, or a retirement plan. It's important to understand this distinction and to not expect the same treatment as a full-time employee. Just because you're operating under their name does not make you a traditional employee of that company. Of course, there's a flip side. Let's be real. Being an independent contractor comes with its own set of perks. For starters, you get to be your own boss. There's no more answering to somebody else or having to follow somebody else's rules. You get to set your own schedule and work as much or as little as you choose to. And let's not forget, there's no dress code. You can wear whatever you want to wear when you're working, within reason. No more uniforms or stuffy suits. Just imagine the possibilities. You can dress up as a ballerina or Evil Knievel if you wanted to. This may not have the traditional benefits of a W-2 job, but it does come with one massive perk, your freedom. The issue is, many drivers are treating this like they're an employee and therefore giving up their freedoms in the process. Let me give you some examples of how some drivers are treating this gig like it's a traditional 9 to 5 job, complete with a boss breathing down their neck and a dress code more restrictive than a straight jacket. As a gig driver, it's important to know that you do not have to accept every order that comes your way. It's okay to be selective and only take the orders that are most convenient and lucrative for you. Don't feel pressured to accept every order that comes your way just because it's there. It's important to prioritize your own financial well-being and convenience. Your acceptance rate can hit 0% and you will not be deactivated. Trust me, I've done it. A few times. The fact of the matter is, in most markets, most orders that are sent to you are probably not worth accepting. It's like Sergio says, know your worth and decline garbage. This brings us perfectly into the next thing that drivers do to act like employees, not knowing their minimums. This can manifest in a few ways. For example, I won't accept an order where I'm gonna make less than $1.50 a mile at the bare minimum, and I won't settle for less. If I'm delivering to an area with no restaurants around that I can pick something up to bring back, I'm gonna to wanna to earn substantially more than $1.50 a mile. I want the increase because I know I'm going to be driving empty miles back to my zone. You should always avoid driving empty miles. Not only is it a waste of time, but it's still burning your gas when you're not getting paid for it. That's why when you do have to drive empty miles, be sure you're being paid more for them. Be sure that you're being compensated fairly for those empty miles. Another way that drivers can treat this like a job is by not saying no to customers or support. If you're coming from a traditional employment background, the concept of telling somebody no may seem like a foreign concept to you. But let me tell you, that's one of the most powerful tools that we have as independent contractors. I'd like to give you a couple of examples of times that I said no, as well as the possible ramifications had I said yes. There was a time I had accepted a double order on DoorDash, but when I got to the restaurant, one of the orders was missing. Driver support told me that I needed to deliver the one order that was ready, but I refused. I knew that without the second order, the pay just wouldn't be worth it, so I said no. Never let support tell you what you're going to do. Everything that comes out of support's mouth should be viewed as nothing more than a suggestion. And the same is true for customers. Every so often, you're going to get a customer that believes that the amount of money that they tipped entitles them to additional products or services that they can't get through the DoorDash app. Sometimes these requests can be harmless and reasonable, while other times they can be demanding and unreasonable. It's understandable that some customers might have expectations of us, but it's important to note that that tip amount is for us and the service that we're providing for them. It does not guarantee them any additional products or services. Over this last summer, I accepted a DoorDash shop and pay order. And while I can't remember the order specifics anymore, I do remember that it paid fairly well for not a whole lot of items. I'm in the habit of always checking the delivery address and instructions before I start the car. That way, if that customer's on my shit list, I can undersign the order and move on. On this order, I noticed that the delivery instructions were kind of unreasonable. They were asking me to use most of that tip to purchase them an age-restricted product. On top of that, this was a no-contact order, so there would have been no ID provided. This was also an item that you cannot order through DoorDash. 
Had I just unassigned the order, I would have taken a hit on my completion rate. And at the time, my completion rate was a little lower than I'm comfortable with. I called support who told me to proceed with the order, shop it, and deliver it without the age-restricted item. That wasn't going to fly with me. Had I shopped the order and not gotten the additional item, that would have opened me up to a bad rating. Again, I told support, no. I explained that they were putting me in a sketchy situation that I didn't want to be in, and if they couldn't help me, transfer me to somebody who could. And they did. The next person I spoke with was a little more sympathetic and understood the predicament I was in. They decided to cancel the order for me, and with that came half pay. By me standing my ground, I still got paid and potentially avoided a situation where I could have broken the law. Now, of course, if the customer request is reasonable and they tipped well, you as an independent contractor are able to make your own decision on if you want to accept or decline their additional request. The next mistake drivers make to treat themselves like employees is not knowing when to call it quits. Earlier in the video, I said as independent contractors, we're free to work as much or as little as we choose to. However, just because you're scheduled does not mean that you are obligated to complete that shift. There have been a few times that I found myself in a parking lot waiting around for orders with no real intention of accepting any of them. Those are the kind of days that I either need to find my focus or go home and quit wasting my own time. Another example of this might be if you've been out driving during the dinner rush and things have slowed down so you find yourself taking higher mileage, lower paying orders. Gas prices are not fluctuating with the order pay. If you're compromising your minimums just to keep the tires turning, it's probably time to end your shift early and just go home. Remember, know your worth, decline garbage. The final thing I want to discuss is drivers who do not multi-app. Sure, in traditional employment, many companies have policies against moonlighting or even freelancing on the side. But, as independent contractors, we are not bound by any of those rules. They can't tell us what to do or where we can make our money. Do yourself a favor and run as many apps as you can get activated on. The more apps you have sending you offers, the more likely you are to see higher paying orders. A major benefit of running more than one app is you're not putting all of your eggs in one basket. The truth of the matter is, is that any of these companies can deactivate you at any moment with or without a valid reason. Additionally, if you do get deactivated, sometimes these companies will keep your money for the work you have already completed, making it nearly impossible for you to get paid. By spreading your work across multiple apps, you're not only protecting yourself against deactivations, but you're also protecting your financial well-being. These are just a few examples of how drivers can treat themselves like employees. What are your thoughts? Do you agree with my list? Did I miss anything? Let us know in the comment section below. If you haven't done so yet, please do consider pressing the like button and subscribing to the Rideshare Guy. I'm Zach Dries Fast for the Rideshare Guy. Take care.